India is diverse, of course, we all know that, and the inequality is truly staggering and visible right through. To bridge the gap, you know, frankly, it's not a one-day agenda, and this is just a quick start, it, so that's wonderful what ASCII is doing, so thank you for setting that up. But to drive real change on the ground, you know, we need to provide ways to break the bias. So inherent, it is so inherently deep-rooted in our consciousness. And that is how we at Disney Star, as a media brand and as a storyteller, come in. Millions of pe people tune into our conversations, into our television channels. We've got almost 34 of them, and onto Disney Plus Hotstar, our streaming platform. So truly, it's, it, you know, for us at least, it goes beyond being just a nice-to-do policy or just skimming the surface. It is about living inclusion. It is, strategic. it is really of strategic business importance to us. It is an imperative where we spotlight diversity and are working towards reducing the inequity. Of course, we've got amazing partners and collaborators, so the power of uh, you know, inclusion is demonstrated right there. The, the point is that when we champion such stories, we hold a mirror to society because it shows us how unkind we can also be sometimes, you know, and how beautiful we can also be and how responsible we should be. So like all of you, we are devoted to building a culture of respect and create a world where everybody belongs. And uh, next slide, please, if you don't mind. The purpose we set ourselves is a fairly lofty one, where we said to inspire a billion imaginations through the power of remarkable storytelling that inspires, gives hope, brings us together, illuminates the world around us, and creates memories. So I'm just going to play you a short clip Pretty mama? Kya ladke is zyada strong hai? What if I like sports and debate? If I wear this, I'll attract attention. Kya meri jake se frasui mein hai? Did he repeat it because he thought I didn't understand it? Am I being pushy if I ask for equal pay? Don't I deserve a seat at the table? Kahi mein kuch zyada to nahi bol gayi. Am I allowed a break without feeling replaced? Am I breastfeeding enough? Kya bachcho ki parvarish sirf meri zimmedari hai? Isn't a bad marriage better than no marriage? Kya ek maa hona hi sab kuch hai? Am I too old to start over? Am I asking for too much? For far too long, we have let our fears play on loop. We've built an entire television business around women, and we cater to women, but what's beautiful to know is that 50% of them are also men who are watching this. So there are amazing allies who watch every day, whom we can influence, because there are almost 750 million people tuning into our channels every month. So, uh, Anupama, would you see the, the picture on the right? Uh, she's one of India's leading characters, television characters. And you probably know that she's really captured the imagination of everybody. But what's differentiated about her, and I think uh, the earlier uh, you know, sessions also spoke about the fact that most of the lead heroines of whether it is movies or whether it is television shows, et cetera, are women who are in their early 20s, who look very glamorous and all of that. And Anupama decides to start her career without any formal education whatsoever in her late 40s. Okay. And uh, she is one of, she really commands a premium, by the way, with all our advertisers. People pay a lot of money for just 10 seconds to be on her show. So that really is an example of how it doesn't matter how old you know, our lead characters are, they have the power to influence. And uh, what's also surprising is that one assumed that it would be the older lot who would be tuning in to watch Anupama every night. It's not true. There are young teenagers who are sitting and watching it, twen women who are in their 20s, women who are in their 50s, and women who are in their 80s, and men, again, watching them. So the fact is that it really shows you the power of influence, and it doesn't really matter. So ageism is something which we are sometimes caught up in, and if we are careful, we really can manage that really well. Uh, Bhagya Lakshmi on the right is actually uh, a story about uh, color discrimination, 
Okay, so in this story, she claims her self-respect and establishes her own identity with confidence and courage. So all our stories basically have story arcs, obviously, and you, you know, sometimes when you check in to a television channel and on a particular show, you might think, oh my God, this is so regressive, look at the conflict they are in, surely we're not like that. But the fact is, if you have the patience and if you follow the journey of the character, and obviously our characters have hooked people, they tune in every night on prime time to watch the show of Bhagi Lakshmi, to understand how she actually has transformed herself. So there are many such stories which we take and transfer them from one region to the other. So Shri Moi, for example, is in, another, is in Bengali, and it was an original show in Bengali, which we decided to call as Anupama in the Hindi JEC landscape and put that out. So some of us, obviously, are, uh, you know, challenges are different across different regions, but they're also common across regions. So I think color discrimination, again, is something which Kantar had pointed out. And I think this is an example of how we can actually influence people. And there are, by the way, there are a lot of brands who actually ask for, again, to have Bhagi Lakshmi on the show, just like Anupama. So she, they also independent influencers and independent brand ambassadors. And what's amazing is that when we actually did the check and we realized that some of the film stars, we are so... Um, you know, very happy to have them on board because we also use a lot of film stars in some of our communication because they are media vehicles in themselves, realize that Anupama has actually beaten a lot of the other. Because, again, we're talking about every day, right? It's what creating a habit every day of watching. Uh, Sarah Savarwal and Gauri Nath, both of them, are, it's, a, it's a show on Hotstar. They are both lesbian characters. And we were very, very conscious about not being provocative and very intentional about it, and no sensationalizing at all, just for the sake of attention. So what we did was made sure that the characters were very, very organic to the whole show. So whatever they spoke of was very much part of the narrative itself. So we never ever had to say, hey, this is a show about two lesbian characters. That's not the show. So what it helped do was actually normalize conversations. <laughs> मेरी माँ का नाम है। कोई खास वजह? मैं इतने साल से अपने पिता का नाम पहन रहा था। तब तो आपने कभी नहीं पूछा कि कोई खास वजह? Star Plus नई सोच। Again, using you know, an entire, it was an IPL uh, season, I think, and we'd use an entire, all the, all the players were wearing their mother's name on their jerseys, and that's the communication we had put out. What the hell is going on, Gurdip? You're also going to eat your mouth. You're going to eat your mouth. This is all the work of the kids. Oh, internet, not the internet. Yes, yes, yes. He's put it on business. That's it. बड़े होनार हो गए आपके बेटे? बेटे नहीं जी, बेटियाँ। शो दिशां। सासरे कल जी, सासरे कल, सासरे कल बता। अच्छा जी। गुरदीप सिंह एंड डॉटर्स। चंगा है। कामयाबी न लड़का देखती है, न लड़की। कामयाबी सिर्फ सोच देखती है। Star Plus, नई सोच। So rewriting patriarchy and having gender conversations is absolutely key to our business in any case. And both the pieces of work which you saw right now, they really worked for us hugely. There were huge conversations. There was a lot of earned media actually, I would say. And, you know, in the Anne Daughters, please, we had gone for some research in Chandigarh, and we actually found posts that there were boards around which says Anne Daughters, which is really an example of how change can happen if you were to plant the right thoughts in people's minds. Uh, could you play Ground News Need No Gender, please? What did you do? What did you do? ये हमारा ग्राउंड है। 
चलो निकलो ग्राउंड लड़का या लड़की नहीं सिर्फ आपका गेम देखता है 11 नवंबर से देखिए हीरो अंडर 17 वुमेन्स चैंपियनशिप स्टार स्पोर्ट्स नेटवर्क हॉटस्टार और जियो टीवी पर सुरोली बी कैरी दिस होल पॉइंट अक्रॉस सक्सेस नीड्स नो जेंडर द ग्राउंड नीड्स नो जेंडर सो वी हैव कंटिन्यूड दोस कन्वर्सेशंस राइट थ्रू एंड इट्स really made a huge difference to the way uh, people perceive our brand which is disney star which was star and you know so that's the beauty of it and we have a lot of brands who want to associate with us because they actually think that hey this is the right collaboration to have itself uh next page please so uh, a couple of years ago i think it was about four three or four years ago uh the law was passed on decriminalizing same sex relationships and we hailed the judgment with this film and also ran a film festival around it Play that, please. लोग क्या कहेंगे? कहेंगे लकी सो एंड सो डिवोर्स होते कोई और मिल गया प्लीज आई एम सॉरी प्लीज यार नितेश ऑनेस्टली मैं खुश हूं तुमने मुझे सच बता दिया इसी में हम दोनों की खुशी है मेरा मेरा प्यार है। सब कुछ बदल रहा है हाय। हेलो। And surprise, <laughs> best friend को see off करने आ गई थी. Thank you. You're amazing, oh. Section 377 रद्द किए जाने की खुशी में मना ये प्यार के अनेक रंग. नवंबर में हर रविवार देखिए कुछ खास फिल्में और कीजिए खुल की बात. and uh, you know we continued the agenda forward and we actually two years ago we done this deck of pride which is actually lying on the table so i'd encourage you to uh, to check it out it basically is a set of uh, playing cards and we put that out during diwali where all the the genders were reimagined completely and it's a very beautiful artistic piece which we worked with the community the artists were amazing and it was welcomed so beautifully about it and we just decided now we're going to keep doing this because it is it's really quite meaningful uh, we obviously support you know film festivals wherever it is possible for us we try and collaborate and be supportive of uh, the inclusion agenda i'm going to take you through words of pride uh, which is a, a platform which we just started working on and i just wanted to note that when we started the journey to do this uh, i mean some meaningful work around the queer community and to build allies we realized the problems were actually deep rooted uh the first words used while describing the queer community are surprisingly cuss words there is name calling which happens incredibly rude and frankly words are the ones which make us feel heard you know seen and also the, sometimes the right words tend to escape us when we need to address the community and i think earlier i think somebody had also spoken about the fact that the power of language is so important when we are going and talking and we are in the same business and i think uh, kantar if i'm not wrong talked about the purpose and how it has to be integrated into your business then you automatically know that it is true and authentic and it is going to really sound right because you can't strike a false note when you're doing when you're pos- if you're posturing then it sounds very very hollow so it's really important to integrate it into your brand purpose and make sure that you can live what you're suggesting and what you're putting out in your communication itself So words of pride actually we worked with 22 feet who conceptualized with us I think Rahul is here a uh, star hopper whom I'm having a conversation with and Gezi on how we built this platform so words of pride is our attempt to bridge the gap in discourse as far as vocabulary is concerned and as a media brand as a storyteller we couldn't think of anything better that we could do uh, to find the right vocabulary um it is a platform featuring a lexicon of words that aim to make every individual in our society feel welcome and most importantly respected and it's also to rem- important to remember that these words have always been in our history they've been mythology they've been in our you know uh, in our culture and all we've done is reclaim them and put them together in a platform we work with the community we've worked with linguists across the country to make sure that whatever is put out there is right and we're not tone deaf about anything so uh and also whatever whatever was on the and I'd encourage you to actually go out and check out wordsofpride.com it's in seven languages and we're building it further the journey has just begun so uh, 
It's our attempt to actually build understanding with our partners. If you could just play the next. I grew up in the 70s and 80s. At that time, the word lesbian was like a swear word. ാണ് <laughs> నా చిన్నప్పటి నుంచి నేను నా జెండా గురించి మాట్లాడడానికి చాలా కష్టపడ్డాను మా ఇరుకు పొరుగు వాళ్ళు సమాజం ఎన్నో పేర్లతో పిలిచి ఆట పట్టించేవారు ఇంకా నన్ను నా పేరుతో కాకుండా ఇతర అవమానకరమైన పిలుపులతో హేళన చేశారు వాళ్ళ మాటలు వాళ్ళ మాటల వల్ల నా జీవితం ఇక ఇలాగే ఉంటుందేమో నేను నా మీద నా మీద నాకే అస్యమైంది ఎందుకంటే వాళ్ళ మాటలు మంచి ఫీలింగ్ని కలిగించవు అవి వింటే మనమే ఆ పదాలుగా మారిపోతామేమో అనిపిస్తుంది తెలుగులో ట్రాన్స్జెండర్లను పిలవటానికి సరైన పదం ఏది లేదు కొజ్జాని పదం ఉన్నప్పటికీ దానిని మంచి అర్థంలో వాడరు సంతాన సామర్థ్యం లేని ఆడవారిలాగా ప్రవర్తించే మగవారిని పిలవటానికి ఆ పదాన్ని వాడతారు చాలా సంవత్సరాలుగా మమ్మల్ని ఆత పట్టించడానికి వాడుతున్న హిజ్రా అనే పదం ఒకటి ఉంది భాష అనేది మార్పు సాధనం దానితో చాలా మార్పులు వస్తాయి మార్పులో భాగమైనప్పుడు మార్పు సాధ్యమవుతుంది అన్నట్లు నేను నమ్మకంతో చెప్పగలను సమాజంలో మనం మార్పు తెవ్వాలనుకుంటే తెవ్వచ్చు మంచి భవిష్యత్తుని చూడొచ్చు ఇవాళ నేను హంసాఫర్ ట్రస్ట్లో అడ్వకసీ డిపార్ట్మెంట్లో పనిచేస్తున్నాను నా జీవిత ప్రయాణంలో చాలా కష్టాలు అనుభవించాను ఎదుర్కొన్నాను హిజ్రా అనే పదంతో నన్ను ఈ సమాజం అవమానించింది ఆ పదంతోనే నేను ఒక అవుట్ అండ్ ప్రౌడ్ హిజ్రాను అని గర్వంగా చెప్పగలను హిజ్రా ఒక శబ్దమే కాక హిజ్రా ఒక సాంప్రదాయం ఉంది హిజ్రా ఒక పోరాటం ఉంది హిజ్రా ఒక సమాజం ఉంది హిజ్రా అనే శబ్దం నా గుర్తు నా పేరు నందిని హిజ్రా నా గౌరవం going to tell you the story of one more chetan or kabir sorry jab main 10 12 saal ka tha tab mere father baal katane saloon le jate the wo samay mujhe mere hone ka sabse zyada ehsaas deta tha after shave lotion ki khushboo aur shaving cream ki khushboo wo sab jo masculinity ki khushboo thi na main chahta tha ki wo sab khushboo mere sharir se bhi aaye mujhe nursery se pata tha कि मैं एक लड़का हूँ लेकिन मेरे पास कोई हिंदी में भाषा नहीं थी कोई शब्द नहीं थे कोई वो कैबलरी नहीं थी जिसमें मैं ये बता पाऊँ कि मैं कौन हूँ मैं क्या हूँ मैं हमेशा बताना चाहता था कि एक लड़की लड़के वाले कपड़े नहीं पहन रही है एक लड़का ही है जो अपने जेंडर के हिसाब से और उसके अनुसार कपड़े पहनता है मैं एक पुरुष ही था मैं एक पुरुष ही हूँ मैंने अपनी पहली सेक्स एजुकेशन दो में ली और तब जाके मुझे ट्रांस आइडेंटिटी एल जी बी टी क्यू आए ट्रांस पर्सन होमोफोबिक कोफोबिक जैसे शब्दों के बारे में पता चला था तब मुझे समझ में आया कि मैं अब नॉर्मल नहीं हूं शायद मुझे पहली बार सुकून ना इतने सालों में तब मिला था जेंडर एजुकेशन ने मुझे मेरी पहचान और ताकत दोनों दी लेकिन पच्चीस सालों तक मेरा यह खौफ था 
कि मेरी पहचान अचानक से लोगों को पता लग जाएगी जिसकी वजह से ना मेरे परिवार को बहुत परेशानी उठानी पड़ सकती है खासतौर पे मेरी माँ को लेकिन आज मेरे पास भाषा होते हुए भी जहां मैं पहले था इतने सालों बाद आज भी मैं वही हूं क्योंकि मेरे परिवार और मेरे समाज मेरे आसपास के लोगों के पास ये भाषा आज भी नहीं है लोगों के लिए या तो कोई स्त्री है या कोई पुरुष है उसके अलावा कुछ नहीं है और उनकी ये जानकारी गलत नहीं है बस अधूरी है जिसे मैं बदलना चाहता हूं मैं कबीर मान मैं आज एक कॉर्पोरेट जॉब के साथ जेंडर सेंसिटाइजेशन एंड सेक्स एजुकेशन के सेशंस भी कंडक्ट करता हूं मुझे लगता है कि सेक्स एजुकेशन और जेंडर सेंसिटाइजेशन बचपन से ही लोगों को मिलना बहुत जरूरी है बाकी सब शायद धीरे धीरे ठीक हो जाएगा बचपन का कबीर कई सारी लेयर्स के अंदर दबा हुआ सांस ले रहा था लेकिन आज का कबीर आउट लाउड एंड प्राउड ट्रांसमैन है Meet Varsha and Asavri. They're from Star Hopper. They've been doing some amazing work in the field. They're filmmakers and they're artists. And uh, I think I'll just ask you to both introduce yourself. Just a few lines each. Hello, everyone. This is Asavri. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Star Hopper. Uh, I'm also the executive producer, a director, and a creative producer with Star Hopper. Um, I think our journey started in 2019 when we sort of realized that, <clears throat> um, you know, there wasn't really a culture in in the aspect of filmmaking, uh, which was very queer friendly. And we've been working in the industry since we were 18. It's been more than 15 years, and I think we wanted to bring in that culture with us. Uh, and this is why we started Star Hopper. And uh, also, we wanted to. Put into forefront certain voices, certain narratives which are not there in the mainstream, uh, mostly underrepresented, underserved communities, including the LGBTQI community. And uh, our films have been on uh, Disney Hotstar, uh, Amazon Prime, Geo Cinema, Nowness, um, Girls in Film has been to. They've been to more than 100 film festivals around the world. Um, It has also been one of our films, Bodies of Desire, has also been a part of Five Films for Freedom, which is um, a program by British Council where they screen um, LGBTQI films in about 200 countries, even in countries where it's illegal. Um, so yeah, um, our journey has also just begun. And uh, having said that, yeah, we've we are we are currently uh, working in features. And ads and branded content and a lot of cultural work which we do with people like British Council, Giotha, Swiss Cultural Funds, and etc. etc. Thank you. That's amazing. So, Varsha, tell me how crucial is the use of inclusive language in content? Okay, um, I think. Um, inclusive language is not just important i think it's crucial especially when you look at the linguistic diversity in india um i mean you can look at words of pride campaign and you can see just how difficult it can be to have conversations about differences you know um and like i remember somebody once saying aren't like labels dividing us more you know like why do we need labels for so many things it's just dividing us more and um, i would like to believe that this is coming from a well intentioned place but the thing is that despite the fact that we're all the same we're all different and it's important to have the language to talk about those differences um and it becomes even more difficult in a country like india where which has so many dialects and languages um because you're not able to talk about like english we have the privilege of being able to speak and understand english so it has sort of encompassed many ways of being you know and the way the world is evolving it has sort of all those words have been included so it becomes difficult for a small little child living somewhere you know in the corner of the country in a remote corner of the country to be able to understand how to even see themselves because 
we need to see ourselves represented to be able to be ourselves. Uh, because for a lot of us, we grew up with no representation. Um, like for someone like me, it took me 30 years to be able to come out because I just didn't have the language to be able to talk about myself, right? So I think language is very important. Um, and it's, it's, it's an ever-changing thing, right? Language is at the end of the day only a tool. You know, people, language doesn't divide people, people do. It's inequalities because That's of people, not because of language. Um, and language is just a tool that people have used uh, for resistance, for uh, creating awareness, because then we can talk about those things, we can educate people about it. And I think, um, yes, it is very important. And I think it's something that requires um, constant uh, commitment, it requires collaboration, and it requires uh, creative solutions, you know? And I think if you're all, all, like there are a bunch of really intelligent people sitting here, and I'm sure we can all come together and find a way to do that if you just, I mean, it's, it's a constant. Language is gonna keep evolving, and we need absolutely, to get with it. Absolutely, yeah. So tell me, Asavri, what is this queer perspective? We keep hearing about it, and we just want to make sure that we are representing the gays right. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, um, I would say as a, as a South Asian person, as a person of color, um, there is just um, so much to unlearn uh, because we, also we are also a, a country which was once colonized. Um, so, you know, when it comes to unlearning, there is, there is, of course, the cis white gaze that we need to unlearn. There is the binary gaze that we need to unlearn. Um, there's, there's the patriarchal gaze that we need to unlearn. Right. And what the queer perspective is sort of doing or the LGBTQIA perspective is doing is basically it's just trying to, um, I think, push that needle every day. Uh, to create more diverse stories, to create more inclusive stories, to create more equitable stories, um, so that people are better represented uh, in the mainstream media. And um, um, and yeah, and I think it's 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 also about you know um, like for example, I'll give an example. It, this was a film which was released, I think, last year. It was a, it was a commercial for GNB Whiskey. Mm -hmm. And it's a very small example of how that film was, uh, was actually executed. Um, and it's about this child coming out to the family, a trans child coming out to the family. And the way it was executed, uh, the film opens with uh, a grandfather putting makeup on himself. And as a viewer, you're watching him, and it's like those typical shots of the mirror where you're putting makeup to yourself, classic queer shots, you know, becoming yourself. So for the audience, you're like, oh my God, it's gonna be another coming out story of a grandfather. Uh, but then over time, and then you see like a white shot of a family coming together. There are multiple people in it. And, uh, you know, and after some time, uh, the film sort of ends when the father introduces this trans child with makeup on it and just says that, you know, this is my name. It's very simply done. It also changes, um, you know, how, how trans narratives are being represented. You don't need to go into their past. You don't need to call, take their dead names. You don't need to do any of it. It's just so simply. And the whole burden basically was given to the grandfather. You know, it's not on the child. And it's, it's so simply and beautifully yes. done that it just teaches you how these stories can just be differently handled, just well handled, you know? And you don't need to show queer trauma to tell queer stories. And I think in terms of a queer perspective, it's, it's just a little more open, you know? It's, it's, it's more inclusive. And um, we really want to see more and more stories coming out. We are st we've still not even gone into indigenous stories right. or even Adivasi stories. Yeah. So I think there are so many intersections we're yet to see and that's what a queer perspective does. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of people out here who are advertisers, who are brand builders and from advertising agencies. So what responsibility do you believe brands have in fostering an inclusive environment? Either of you could answer this. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> 
I think uh, there are two sides to this, and uh, and I always say this, and I think um, Kenas and Sonali also mentioned about it uh, when they were saying that uh, one side of it is, of course, how diverse and inclusive your own teams are, your industry is, this room is, you know, the people in leadership, the people in leadership uh, positions are. And then the other side to it is where, um, you know, the kind of advertisements we produce for the audience. Um, and, uh, you know, I think all of these decision-making uh, areas, I think there needs to be, it needs to be very specifically um, maneuvered because I think you need to have, if, especially if you're telling stories about certain communities who do not exist in that room when you're writing it, I think it's important to include those communities in the room when you're writing it. And, uh, you know, so that you feel, because brands don't just make, uh, you know, the brands, a brand's universe it, uh, exists of the employees, uh, the partners, the audience, and all of them, you know, and I think it, they will feel truly represented when you involve them in the making of those films. So what strategies do you think we can do to make sure that we don't stereotype? Um, You've spoken about in an earlier conversation on casting, for example. Yeah, I think like, somebody, uh, else also spoke. somebody else also spoke about casting. I think, yes, that is really important, but I think it's also about how casting call-outs go out. Yes. Like if you actually see the casting call-outs that people, are, a lot of our friends are actors and, because the community in Bombay, everybody knows everybody. They yeah. keep getting, it's ridiculous, the kind of things that come out. So there needs to be certain guidelines that are put into place as to how casting is going to happen. What is the language you're gonna put out there? Um, you're talking to people about like, are you pre-transition, post-transition? Do you have a beard? Do you not have a beard? Uh, trans men casting is going out to trans women. It's ridiculous. Like a little bit of education would help. Like read a few articles. Uh, get people on board. I think another thing I feel is like, apart from DNI, DEI workshops that happen, I think it's really important for creative professionals, whether they're in agencies or clients or production houses, I think it's important for them also to get some sort of agenda sensitization, uh, sensitization in terms of what language is good, what kind of representation um, is good, because see, yes, there is some representation happening. We're seeing ourselves a little bit, but the question is, is it, is it good enough? It's not. Yeah, it's really not. Yeah. Like, there are trans mask identities are barely seen. What about the intersex people? What about asexuals? What about, like, over-hypersexualizing queer identities all the time, still playing on the same tropes um, of the effeminate gay guy and, you know, the tragic lesbian with the unre unrequited love doomed for, like, a sad ending. All of those things, I think it's also about like, it's not just casting, it's also about hiring the people who are gonna be telling those stories because you may understand, you may get the knowledge by reading a lot about what all one, you know, being queer is, but you will never really understand it. For that, you need people in the room, you need people in places of power who are making these decisions in those yeah. rooms to be able to, you know, um, contribute because um, if you just hire people to come and say something, I mean, they're in places of vulnerability. And then it just becomes about exploiting them because, hey, they need money, they need jobs, so you're like exploiting them in a way, whether you're realizing or not. So your unconscious yeah. biases, uh, you need somebody in the room to call that out. No, absolutely. I think I take back all of these for our company as well to make sure that we follow these and we might begin to hear a few. You know, I'm just thinking of the casting piece, and I've not really looked at it to see what is the casting, you know, brief which is going out. I think yeah. that's really very, very important. Yeah. So, what how, what can the world do to be a better ally? Um, I'll keep it very short because I know we're three yeah. minutes over time. Yeah, um, but I think just to be, uh, I think it's uh, it's more than lip service and armchair advocacy. It's really, um, uh, you know, uh, it, as Indians, we are the most, one of the most multiracial people in this world. And I think we need to embrace that. Uh, and there are so many diverse identities that exist within this country or even in South Asia. Um, and I think to be a better ally, you need to be more of an active ally. Um, you need to, uh, like I am also a neurodivergent filmmaker. Uh, I'm not visibly, 
you know, I don't have a visible disability, but I, ha I am neurodivergent. So I think um, just making sure all of these people exist in a room, especially when you're telling certain stories, what that brings is what that, uh, it actually brings something more original. It brings something more profound. Just, and, it, and honestly, I think representation, diversity, equity, uh, when it's done right, everyone wins. Yeah. So Absolutely. I think, yeah, I think we should just do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was really enlightening, and I'm sure everybody really learned a lot more than what they knew when they walked into the room. So thank you.